Well, good morning. It is Thursday, September the 5th, and we're going to go straight into the King James Bible, 1 Samuel. This is chapter 12. And if you remember yesterday, Saul beat the Amorites and consolidated his position among the people. And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice in all that you have said unto me, and have made a king over you. And now, behold, the king walketh before you, and I am old and gray-headed. And behold, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Behold, here I am, witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind mine eyes therewith? And I will restore it you. And they said, Thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken aught of any man's hand. And he said unto them, the Lord is witness against you. And his anointed is witness this day, that you have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, He is witness. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and your fathers. When Jacob was come into Egypt, and your fathers cried unto the Lord, then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt, and made them dwell in this place. And when they forgot that the Lord their God, he sold them into the hands of Caesarea, captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. And they cried unto the Lord, and said, We have sinned, because we have forsaken the Lord, and served Balaam and Ashtoreth. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. And the Lord sent Jerobal and Bidan, and Yephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and you dwelled safe. And when you saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, you said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us, when the Lord your God was your king. Now therefore, Behold the king whom you have chosen, and whom you have desired, and behold, the Lord hath set a king over you. If you will fear the Lord, and serve him, and obey his voice, and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. Now, therefore, stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Is it not wheat harvest today? I will call unto the Lord, and he shall send thunder and rain that you may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, which you have done in the sight of the Lord, in asking you a king. So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we die not, for we have added unto all our sins this evil to ask us a king. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, you have done all this wickedness, yet turn not aside from following the Lord. 
but serve the Lord with all your heart. And turn you not aside, for then should you go after vain things, which cannot profit nor deliver, for they are vain. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it hath pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. But if you shall still do wickedly, you shall be consumed, both ye and your king. Wow. Conditional or what? In 14. If you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, if... Then shall both ye and the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord and rebel against the commandments of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. You see, God is a loving father, but he puts down conditions, just as we do to our children when we're bringing them up. If you tidy up your room, you can go see the movie. If you clear the dishes off the table, you can watch the cartoons. You know, it's exactly the same. He is our father and he is laying down conditions. It's very clear, isn't it? And he never changes. It's always, always the same. And we're told in verse 24, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. Consider how great things he hath done for you. And then the last verse, but if you shall still do wickedly, you shall be consumed, both ye and your king. 21. And turn ye not aside, for then you should go after vain things, which cannot profit nor deliver, for they are vain. How often do we chase after vain things to satisfy our wants and lusts and desires, to satisfy our vanity? And they are shallow and unfulfilling. It's temporary at the best, but it fades. It wanes, it doesn't last, but God does. He lasts throughout everything, everything. Please continue to pray for Israel. We watched the testimony of one of the hostages who had been released in the first ceasefire agreement deal. Her husband is still there, Keith. He's 65 years old. He was losing weight rapidly. He'd been shot. He had his ribs broken. That was just on the day, October the 7th. He was bleeding. Everyone's getting infection. Everyone is starving. She even said that underground, and we're talking 40 meters, we're talking about 120 feet underground. She said there was no oxygen. She said breathing was difficult. The few times that they moved them, and in her short space of time in captivity, she'd been moved 13 times. When they were able to get some air, they just rejoiced in the simple fact that they could get oxygen into their bodies, clean air, not polluted. But they are being treated abominably. They're being tortured. They're being raped. They're being molested. They're being beaten. Just over a hundred hostages are still down there in those tunnels. And they've been there for 10 months, 10 and a half months now. Lord, 
please have mercy upon their souls and bring them home. And please have mercy upon their captives and deal with them justly. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Remember, God loves you. I love you too. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Bye for now.